in 2.3, we're going to work on some techniques for helping us find real zeros. So the first one is long division. And remember when you're a little kid, if you're going to divide 683 by the 7, you would say, well, 7 doesn't go into 6, but it goes into 68 9 times. 9 times 7 is 63. So I take 9 times 7 to get 63, and I subtract, and I get a 5 remainder. And I bring down the 3, so that's 53. 7 goes in there 7 times, which is 49. And I had a remainder of 4. Is 7 a factor of 683? No, because the remainder is 4. It did not go into it, quote unquote, evenly. Well, we can do the same thing when we look at dividing polynomial. So I can take this polynomial and I'll just finish the uh, division bar across there. So the first thing you do is you, you basically want to look at what's on the left. And so what I mean by that is I'm going to take the 6x cubed that's on the left and we're dividing by the x that's on the left on the outside. So if I cross that off it tells me, go ahead and write 6x squared on top. Now that 6x squared times x would be 6x cubed. And we want this every time. We want these two numbers to be identical. But you also have to take it times the negative 2. So 6 times negative 2 is negative 12x squared. We're going to put that in parentheses before we subtract. And when I subtract, be very careful. It's 6 minus 6, so that's gone. But this negative will affect this negative. So we really end up with, let me bring it in here now with plus, and so that's negative 7x squared. Then you can go ahead and bring down the other terms, and that's plus 16x minus 4. And again, you can take your 7x squared off to the side and divide by the x that's out front. And notice what you get. So you would write 7x up top. Multiply it by out front. So 7x times x is 7. Oops, oops, oops. I did not write that down correctly. Over here, this was supposed to be negative 7x squared right there. I forgot to write my negative. So I should be writing negative 7x on top. Sorry. Write negative 7x on top. So that's negative 7x squared plus 14x. Now I knew I made a mistake because the, the two numbers at the front should be the same. So when you go to subtract, these two things are identical. So when you say negative 7 minus negative 7, it goes away. And then you have... 16 minus 14, so now you have 2x minus 4. And then I can take that 2x off to the side and divide by x out front, and it's left with a 2. So I go 2 on top, 2 times x is 2x, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, and look at those things are identical. So when you subtract, you get a remainder of 0. So it is a factor x minus 2 is a factor of the cubic 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4. All right, so now let's look at the next example. This time we have to write it out ourselves, so we're going to go x cubed minus 4x squared minus 25. And x minus 5 is out front. Now notice we're missing an x term. It goes from x squared to the constant. So be very careful how you line up like terms. With long division, we don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to do x cubed. That's what's on the left first. Um, right in here. And then x on the outside there. So when I get rid of that, I'm writing x squared on top. x squared times x is x cubed 
x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. Put it in parentheses and subtract. Because these are identical, they go away. x cubed minus x cubed is gone. But be careful here. We have this negative of a negative. So this is really plus. And so 4, negative 4 plus 5 is positive x squared. So again, I can take my x squared off to the side and divide by x. And when I do that, it tells me to write an x on top. x times x is x squared. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. So again, look at what's happening. we got to make sure we're doing like terms. x squared minus x squared right here goes away. But there's 0x in this one. So when I subtract, again, this negative makes this positive. So what's 0 plus 5x? Just 5x. Then bring down the 25. That's negative 25. So then off to the side, you do 5x, and you divide by the x that's out front. And I put a 5 on top. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. And again, these two are identical, so you get a remainder of 0. So both of those have been factors. You're going to do the next example on your own. It's a DIY, so pause the video now. So you're asked to divide x cubed 7x minus 6 by the x minus 3. So you can see each time I would be putting parentheses around these to make sure that when you take the negative sign to each one, you get this right. Um, and here, when you took 3x squared times negative 3, this would have been negative first, but the double negative makes it positive. So this one did work. If not, ask questions, let me know. So some notes, always write the dividend and divisor and descending powers of the variables. Uh, so you want x cubed first, then x squared. Insert placeholders with zero coefficients for any missing powers. I didn't do it on the first one. If you add and subtract like powers, you shouldn't need to add the placeholders in long division. You can if you'd like. Uh, dividend equals the divisor plus quotient, or divisor times quotient plus remainder. If the remainder is zero, then the divisor evenly divides into it. So another example. So we're supposed to divide this. So it would be 2x to the 4th plus 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. We're supposed to divide all of that by x squared plus 2x minus 3. So the first thing we'll do is off to the side, do 2x to the fourth divided by x squared. So I take what's on the left in here and divide by what's on the left out here. And I write it with the x's written out so you can cross those off. And we're putting a 2x squared on top. Now you have to distribute to all three things out front. So that's 2x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 6x squared. And when you subtract, these are identical, so they go away. These are identical, so they go away. And be careful here, this is where that negative sign comes all the way to here, and that's plus. So what's negative 5 plus 6x squared? It's x squared. Let's bring these down. And now I have x squared off to the side divided by x squared. Well, when you cross that off, you're leaving behind a 1. So we're going to go plus 1 up top. And 1 times all of these leaves me with x squared plus 2x minus 3. Put in parentheses and subtract. 
So these go away. What's 3 minus 2? That would be x. What's negative 2 minus negative 3? So remember, this would now turn into plus 3. So that's plus 1. So notice the remainder did not equal 0. So this, this quadratic is not a factor. Why don't you try the next one as a DIY? So with example number 2, get it in the right order, do your long division, and let's take a look. So pause the video now. So you might have difficulty seeing what's happening, but make sure you're putting these in parentheses. And then the sign, they've already written out what's going on, so you might have some difficulty, but always remember you're subtracting the stuff on the bottom. But you ended up with a remainder, so it did not work. Some people write the remainder like this. Like here was your answer plus this remainder, this negative 6 over what you divided by. So not a big deal. So next we're getting into synthetic division. So with synthetic division, we write the coefficients in this row, what's being divided. What we're dividing by out front, we set equal to zero and write that number there in this vertical pattern. So you always add what's in the box, multiply out, and I'll show you how this works, and then your remain remainder is here. So in this first example, I just do a little box like this, and I have a 2, a negative 8, a 13, and a negative 10. Those are the coefficients of the dividend, so I write those in a box. Now over here, I set this equal to 0, add 2 on both sides, x equals 2. So what we're doing is we're seeing if x minus 2 is a factor, but what we're really seeing is is the 2 a solution? Like, will it create an output of 0 or a remainder of 0? So I put the 2 out front. Now you start by adding. Well, there's nothing under this 2. So that's just a 2. Now out here, you're multiplying. So 2 times 2 is 4. And again, you add. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. Multiply. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Add 13 to negative 8 is 5. Multiply 2 times 5 is 10. So I got a 0. I usually put a little box off to the side of the 0. And so this will be the remainder. This is the constant. This is an x. This is an x squared. So now I know x minus 2. That was the factor that we were checking times 2x squared minus 4x plus 5, that's how you, plus 5, the constant, is equal to 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 13x minus 10. So we were able to find a factor of that cubic. So this next example is a DIY. Sorry, is a DIY, so try that on your own. Pause the video now. So here's the answer to that DIY. Remember, this is x plus 2, but you're going to set that equal to 0, and you'll put negative 2 over here. Factor, 0, or solution. And I might have done my box like this. But again, this is the remainder, so it turned out to be a remainder of 0. So yes, x plus 2 is a factor, negative 2 worked. So on this one, I do 4 for the x, but there's no x cubed here. So I have to put a 0 in, minus 2, minus 2 for the x squared minus 1, plus 1. And again, plus 2 is the factor, so negative 2 is my uh, root that we're trying. So don't forget, you need the placeholder of 0. There's no x cubed. There's 0 x cubed in the problem. So the 4 drops through, multiply, negative 8, add 
negative 8, multiply 16, add 14, multiply negative 28, add negative 29, multiply 58, and so I get a remainder of 59. So this one does not work. So you would try a new number or something. So the next example says show that x plus 2 is a factor. So I guess what I would do is start my synthetic division. I have a 1x cubed. Now notice there's 0x squared here, so I'm going to put a 0, then a negative 28, then a negative 48. And x plus 2 is the factor, so negative 2 goes out here. So the 1 drops through, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, add negative 2, multiply is 4, negative 24, multiply negative 2 times negative 24 is 48, and I got a remainder of 0. So now I know x plus 2 is a factor, and that's a negative 2 for the solution. Now what's left is x squared minus 2x minus 24, which would easily factor into x minus 6 and x plus 4. So now I have x plus or x minus 6 and x plus 4 as more factors, which means 6 and negative 4 are zeros. So once you do synthetic division a couple times, then you're able to get to a quadratic and probably have some technique to solve the quadratic.